In this video, we're going to take a look at some consonant feature exercises. And hopefully this will help you grasp the idea of what features are and what sounds have what features and how we can capture natural classes using features. So the first exercise, I have four phonetic pairs here. And I'm asking which one feature distinguishes each pair. So in other words, for this first one with th and th, which feature distinguishes between these two sounds? And the first one, of course, is going to be plus or minus voice. So the only difference between these two sounds is voicing. The theta on the left is minus voice. The eth on the right is plus voice. What about p and f? Which one feature separates these two sounds? Well, that's going to be plus or minus continuant, which we shorten with plus minus cont. So for instance, p is minus continuant because there's a full closure in the mouth, while f is plus continuant because it has that turbulent airflow. Now you might be saying, hold on a second. This sound here is bilabial, and this sound here is labiodental. And if we were to take a look at all of the phonemes in the world, or all the phones in the world, and I were to say plus or minus continuant, well, the answer would actually be p and h. But in English, we don't have this bilabial fricative. The closest thing we have in English is this f. So in terms of features for English consonants, the only contrast or the only distinctive feature that separates these two sounds is plus or minus continuant. If we were to say look at Japanese, for instance, we'd have a bit of a problem because, well, we wouldn't get that F there, we would get the bilabial fricative. But in English, this is the feature that, contra that contrasts the sounds. Okay, what about S and TH? Well, if I make these sounds, I know these are both coronal sounds. And again, these have slightly different places of articulation. So we have s and we have th. But do you remember what s and th are different in? Well, s is made with the tip of the tongue, while th is made with the blade of the tongue. And which feature separates these? Well, this is the plus or minus distributed feature. So again, minus distributed is the tip of the tongue and plus distributed is the blade of the tongue. So that is the feature separating s and th. Okay, finally, what about s and sh? Okay, well, s, this is the alveolar fricative and sh is the palatal alveolar fricative. So what feature, what feature under coronal features separates these two sounds? Well, that is the plus or minus anterior feature. Remember, plus anterior is fronted, which means the alveolar ridge or dental, and minus anterior is the palate or palatal alveolar sounds. So if you're able to look at these sound contrasts and figure out which feature separates them, this is really good for finding natural classes because sometimes you're looking and you have this group of sounds and you're thinking, okay, I just need to get rid of this one sound. How do I get rid of this one sound to get the natural class that I want? And if you know the features that distinguish two different sounds, you can start narrowing down your set and getting it just the way you want. So for instance, if I want to have a natural class of these alveolar sounds and I've narrowed it down and I have this palatal alveolar in there, I just think, oh, if I put plus anterior in there, then I get rid of that shh get rid of that palatal alveolar fricative. In fact, let's use that to write feature matrices to capture these natural classes. So for instance, in the first one I have p, b, t, d, k, and g. What is this? This is the natural class of stops. So the question is, which features do I need to capture the natural class of stops? Okay, let's think about this. First of all, I have all these sounds in my inventory. I have every single vowel, every single consonant. What's the first thing I do to get it down to, say, stops, fricatives, and affricates? Well, I put minus sonorant in there. If I put minus sonorant in there, that means I'm getting rid of the nasals, 
I'm getting rid of the glides, I'm getting rid of the vowels, and I'm getting rid of the liquids. Okay, so minus sonorant, I'm now left with stops, fricatives, and affricates. But I want just the stops. So maybe I should put minus continuant in there because these are all full closures. So minus sonorant, minus continuant. Now with minus continuant, what don't I have? I don't have fricatives anymore. What about affricates? Do I have affricates? Mm, I still have affricates. Okay, so I need to get rid of ch. I need to get rid of j. Well, what feature separates j and ch from p, b, t, d, k, and g? Well, affricates are plus delayed release, while stops are minus delayed release. So if I put minus dr here, now look, all I have left, I have minus sonorants, so I've narrowed it down with this feature. These are now the obstruents. With this feature, I now have just affricates and stops. And with minus dr, I just have the stops left. So the question is, okay, this captures p, b, t, d, k, g. This is the class of stops, the natural class of stops. Could I do better? In other words, I have three features here. Do I need three features? The answer is no. I don't need three features. I could do this with two. I could do this with minus delayed release. Because if I have minus delayed release, I already have just the obstruents, and minus dr is going to make it just the stops. Okay. So this natural class can be found with just minus owner at minus delayed release. Uh, we could say, well, why do we need minus sonorant there? Well, minus delayed release, uh, we haven't necessarily defined it for other sounds yet, so we haven't defined it for nasals, laterals, liquids, etc. So maybe if we look at a feature chart, we can see that just minus delayed release captures all of the English stops fine. Um, but from what I've shown so far, it, we need to include this minus sonorant just to get the obstruents there. Okay, what about two? Y and w. Well, these are both glides. And, well, what do we know about glides? We saw before the feature chart to get just at glides. So what do we need? Well, first of all, what are glides? Glides are minus syllabic. Are they consonantal? No, they're not consonantal, so they're minus cons. In fact, normally we put minus syllabic just as minus sil. Are they sonorant? Well, yes, they're sonorant because they're not obstruents. And what about approximants? Well, let's think about this. Approximants. Approximants include vowels, glides, and liquids. So yes, it is approximate. So we could write y and w as minus sil minus cons plus sonorant plus approximant. But again, we might have some redundant features here. So for instance, well, glides essentially are the closest thing to vowels. So plus syllabic is vowels, minus syllabic is everything else. So we should probably keep minus syllabic in there. Now, consonants. Nasals are consonants, liquids are consonants, obstruents are consonants. Are glides consonants? No. So minus consonants is V and glides, and then minus syllabic would be glides and liquids and nasals and obstruents. So with just minus syllabic, minus consonantal, we can narrow down this natural class to be just y and fu, or glides. So minus syllabic, minus consonantal, this is the natural class of glides. In fact, if you go back to the previous video, look at the chart, you'll see this is all we need to capture glides. Okay. Two more. T, D, S, N, and Z. Okay, first of all, what do I notice here? These are all coronal sounds. These are coronal, and these are definitely not sonorant sounds. These are obstruents. But T, D, S, N, and Z. If I make those sounds, 
which part of my tongue is doing those? So first of all, one thing we can notice is that these are all alveolar sounds. But even more so, these are alveolar sounds made with the tip of the tongue. And so we have tip here. So what's the feature that distinguishes between tip and blade? That is distributed. So plus distributed is made with the blade, but minus distributed is made with the tip. So we can classify these groups of sounds as being minus distributive minus sonorant coronals. Okay. And of course we can always say, well, what about voicelessness? What about voice? Does it matter if they're voiced or voiceless? The answer is no, because we have both voiced and voiceless sounds in here. We also have nasals too. So we don't need to count out the nasals. Okay, the last one, p, k, and t. These are our aspirated sounds. Okay, so it is standard when dealing with instruments to write minus sonorant. Now, p, k, and t. Well, these are aspirated, and which feature makes aspiration? Plus spread glottis. Now, <laughs> there's an issue here. What's the issue? H is also, or H, is also plus spread glottis, and it's also not a sonorant sound. The question is, how do we get rid of H? Well, phonetically, H is a consonant, but according to features, H is minus consonantal. Now, this might seem a little bit weird, and it is kind of weird at first, because this is a phonological versus phonetic contrast. This is where phonetics and phonology do not quite agree with each other. Phonetically, h huh, is consonantal, but phonologically, it has been determined that this is a minus consonantal sound. So to get rid of the H in this group, we put a minus consonantal. So this is minus sonorant, minus consonantal, plus spread glottis. Okay, so that's it for the practice. Hopefully this helped a little bit. Uh, I really expect you not just to look at these. I expect you to go and like find exercises online or something and then check with these as well afterwards, verify your understanding. Um, but again, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer your questions.